Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to my Lightroom blog channel. It is Tuesday, making it Lightroom Tuesday. So obviously I'm going to do something about Lightroom. And in this episode, weather sword video, I'm going to talk about the slideshow module. Just a little bit, not too in deep, because otherwise it could be here for quite a while. Hey folks, so I'm gonna have a look at the slideshow module and that is where you can just really create slideshows and export them to video, PDF or JPEG. So let's dive right in. So I have a collection open here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just literally gonna go straight into the slideshow module. It will use whatever the default settings were. So this is something that I obviously created at some stage before. Now there are some templates that give you an idea of what I can do. So you got caption and rating. So let me show you some of the stuff. Crop to fill will then make the image large. So obviously if the image is uh, like a, a vertical image, it will crop right into the image. So not necessarily good if there's lots of this type of image in it, um, but okay if you've got loads of kind of horizontal images, a little bit better. So I generally not use that one. XF metadata will be the kind of one I was always at a camera club, I'd be using something like that. And uh, let me simple, it's just a very basic black one. And the idea being that you can just do that and then widescreen is just literally widescreen with nothing on it. So let's start off with that widescreen one anyway and just go from there. So at the top we have the options and when we saw the zoom earlier, that's literally just this option here, which lets you zoom it in completely. Um, so I'm going to knock that off there. Stroke border will be kind of hard to see with this without making a color. So let me just put in a border. Oh yeah, so it's come up white. So that makes it nice and easier. And of course then you can have it as wide as you want. Now, cash shadow is not going to do a whole lot here because of the fact that our background is black. So what I might just dump down here is if we take black, we take a background color, that'll give us a background color. And but first what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to layout and show guides. I'm just going to pull that in. Now you can create an aspect ratio here that sets the aspect ratio of the slides and as you export them. So it can be for screen, but you can also choose to have it be 169 automatically or 43 if that's what you prefer. So just move the guides in so that we can see what some of the other things are doing. And where it says show guides, that's these little guides here. And you can actually drag these guides as well. Right? And if you turn off the link, it means that you can move stuff around to the sides and things like that. It is possible to use overlays, text or identity place, text overlays, but that's a whole different ball game that we'll talk about again. Uh, but in the meantime, because we have now moved these guides in, we've created an area where I can actually cast a shadow. So here we can just, this is basically the drop shadow behind it. Uh, it just gives it kind of a lift off the background to give it a bit of three dimensionality. Of course, from here you can choose the angle of the shadow. You can choose the radius, the offset. That's how far away it is. Let me just bring the radius down so you can see a bit better. And then, of course, the opacity is how strong the actual shadow is. So jumping down really quickly, you have a couple of overlays and things like that you can put on them. So the identity plate uh, is this one here. So you can just have a logo. So there's a couple of different ones that I've done. And you can obviously save a few of them here. Again, we can go into that separately. Uh, override color will any text that you've got on it will override the color here. So if you had like text that was and it was white, this would let you change the color. So this is the opacity and scale of the actual uh, identity plate itself. Sorry, that should change it down. Yeah, there we go. Just make sure it's actually working. The other thing is that you can actually grab this and move it around and you'll see that little anchor points show up as you do it. So you're able to set anchor points and you can have it or over the image and stuff like that. Okay. And where it says render behind image, it literally puts it behind the image. Oh, that means if it was down here, uh, it was behind rather than in front of the image. If I take it off, we'll see it'll jump to the front of the image. So that's what that does. Watermarking will add a watermark. So it's just your standard watermark. So let's say I could put in um, just that would be my standard logo showing up on the actual images themselves if you want it. You can have rating stars, which is useful if you're going through with a client and, and that will actually show you whatever ratings are for the stars that are on the image. Um, let me just say, I'm just going to stick say three on that one there. So we get our rating. So we can now see that it shows up here. Um, Text overlay, so you can put text on the image as well. So that's through the bottom here. So we click uh, ABC, so we do custom text. Well, what we can do is we can actually choose it to come from the caption directly. Okay, so this these happen to have captions on them already. So you can then move around and you can place that. 
by looking where the anchor is you can kind of get it centered as well if you want that now that's not the only text you can put in you can put in you know you could change that and have it to be your exposure and stuff like that instead so if you're talking say for example about the the image itself in like in a talk you could actually show off what the settings are rather than having to try and remember them yourself lots of people at camera clubs and stuff like to ask what settings did you use for that right so then you can choose the opacity of the text uh, the color of the text what the font face is or and like if it's bold or condensed or any of that kind of stuff right you can also choose a shadow so you can have a drop shadow on the text as well similar to a it there above so your backdrop can have a color wash we've seen the background color but a wash will let you do two colors so if i click color wash that would blend basically from the background color which is lighter in this case to the color wash color which is darker by changing the angle you can change the angle that the wash goes at so you can have a go across in whatever direction you want and with the opacity you can choose how strong it is so if i went for like a black just to make it really really strong here for example by changing the opacity i can get different levels of gray right through black so that's just creating a little wash behind the images and you can also put in a background image and the, the, the way you do that is you would literally drag one of these and drop it onto it and that would create the background image for there but i am not going to do that and you can change that well sure, let's do it anyway i say that but you know it's awkward when it's not in and then you can change the opacity of it as well so the wash will still work in kind of behind that it's just if you wanted a solid theme for your background here as well i'm going to turn it off just because i actually don't want it on for this now your intro and outro screen are intro and end screen is when you create the actual slideshow itself it will just add a screen at the beginning and a screen at the end now what you can actually do for this is you don't have to use this identity plate so you could actually go in here and say edit and you could write in something here um, well well we can scale it anyway so click ok All right, so we can just scale it up then so as you can see there so that will create this slide that plays at the beginning and you can have an ending screen as well. So it could be the identity play at the end, for example. Do that. Now we go to actually play it. It will play it. So scale that up as well. Let's see where it is. Now, from there you can add music. Okay, so it can be a playlist. It can be a few bits and bobs. It can be, uh, if you click plus, you can actually add and create a playlist. Now it, it's only going to be MP3s. So turn on the music. Now I did have some sound here that's missing, which is obviously a track that I've written, which I need to find because I actually want to use it in the background to these uh, videos. I prefer it to the one I'm using, even though I wrote that one as well. I just prefer the other one. So if you click plus, it will search. And so I've just gone to somewhere that I happen to have some ones taken already. So let's just say Tokyo, for example, here. I'm not going to play this back anyway. So, oh, we've black bars. Ooh, lovely. Haven't seen black bars in a while. That's supposed to be fixed. Uh, so we now have that created here and I need to remove that one because it's not actually there. So what we can do is by selecting automatic, what it'll do is it will actually time it to the music. So it fits or we can just click fit to music and it will then make it completely fit to the music. So it'll be the same length as that. Now you can, like if there's, if you have video inside the slideshow, which we're not going to do in this, you can choose to have the music play over the video or you can choose to have the audio from the video come in as well. Now you have an option for pan and zoom, which will allow it to pan and zoom. And then of course you can repeat slideshow so the slideshow will repeat again. And then you can create a random order so that they're not in the order that you have them in. And then you can have them as whatever quality you want. So I'm going to just go draft quality here. You have two options from there. You have the preview and the play option. So I will probably mute some audio here because um, even though I have permission to use those tracks, they're from a friend of mine. Uh, I haven't spoken to them in a while, so I don't know how that stands. So uh, I don't want to just play them and then have this mess up on YouTube over copyright stuff. But uh, so what I'm going to do is I will probably have to pull audio out for a second. So I'm just going to click play. Um, so here we have, we can see London and then because we have the pan and zoom on, it'll start to pan and zoom within it. Now, because this is draft quality, we can see that it's not looking as good as it possibly could because uh, they're just literally a draft quality thing to, sh to show you the idea of what it looks like. Now, when you're ready to get them out to other people, 
you an option to export. So you can export a PDF, right? And that lets you set a screen size. And so you can name it and set up all of the quality. So you can have different screen sizes to let it go. Now it's chosen basically what is half of the retina size. And the same with export video, you can export a video. And so you can choose to be like a 1080, for example, to go out. And the other thing that you can do is in your window, uh, you can export a JPEG one, which will export a whole series of JPEGs. Now, you can also save what you've done here as a template. So you could add it here and give it a name. Sean, and then if we look at user templates, it now shows up over here. So that basically is a quick run through slideshow module inside Lightroom. Hey folks, I hope you found that useful. Uh, give it a like if you did, and also subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, like I say, Lightroom stuff was on Tuesdays. We do photo stuff on Fridays at the moment. And uh, yeah, share it with your friends, you know, pass it around, hit the notification bell if you'd like to get notified when I put new stuff online. And of course, thank you for taking time to watch this, and I will see you in the next video.